ravaging the East since 1937 and Japan's invasion of China, reached Europe on the 1st of September 1939 with Germany's invasion of Poland. It became global on the 7th of December 1941 when Japanese aircraft attacked the American naval base at Pearl Harbor. It touched every continent and lasted for six years. It ended with a new weapon for a new age. This is the history of the greatest of all man-made events. These men are part of that history. They are eyewitnesses to the triumphs and tragedies of the war wherever it was fought. Their testimony is part of the story of how our world was made. those who could pay and those who could no longer meet. The price of empire. In the last episode of The Price of Empire, with British and American forces crossing the Rhine, with the Red Army surging over Germany's eastern border, the defeat of Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich is inevitable. In the final episode, Peace in Asia will follow peace in Europe after the detonation of a terrible new weapon. On the 28th of March, 1945, the Supreme Allied Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower, acting on his own initiative, advised the Soviet leadership that his troops would be advancing on the line Erfurt, Leipzig, Dresden. He made it clear that Berlin was not his objective. Stalin, delighted, replied that he too regarded Berlin as of no consequence. Churchill was appalled. He argued that the post-war settlement demanded that the Allies meet the Russians as far east as possible. Churchill's influence, Britain's influence, was on the wane. On the 28th, three army groups began their move towards the line Erfurt-Leipzig-Dresden. The British second moved from its bridgehead at Vessel the US 1st and 3rd trapped the German 89th Corps around Gießen. Four days later, the US 9th linked with the 1st at Lippstadt. In a little over three weeks, they would make contact with the Red Army. On April the 15th, after the Ruhr pocket had been cut in two, Field Marshal Walter Model was invited to surrender. Model replied that he was bound by his oath to Adolf Hitler and a formal surrender was out of the question. Instead, he dissolved his army group. 325,000 German troops were taken prisoner. 20th of April, the propaganda ministry in Berlin publicly denounced Army Group B as traitors. Model, who knew that the Soviets had indicted him for war crimes, shot himself in the head. Also in April, Nuremberg, so symbolic of Nazism, fell to General Patch's 7th US Army and American forces crossed the Danube. On the 25th, 
American and Soviet troops made contact. On the same day, the Red Army completed its encirclement of Berlin. Hitler declared that Berlin was to be a fortress. Defensive preparations were made in depth, but resources were far from elite. The 12th Army, west of the city, comprised 12 divisions that were a grab bag of raw recruits, misfits, leftovers, and veterans. Von Manteuffel's 3rd Panzer Army, north of the city, comprised nine divisions, none of which was panzer. The total deployed in defense of the capital was some 50 in different divisions coming towards them were almost 200 divisions of the Red Army. And as they came on, they scorched the earth. Everywhere that men make war, there is a tragic toll of brutalized, raped, and murdered women. Not even the most inspired apologist can suggest that these victims were paying for crimes they had committed. Germany maintained 500 military brothels. As the Red Army surged into Berlin, it is estimated that 80,000 survived rape and 10,000 rape victims died, many by suicide. The figures are predictably disputed. The Soviet offensive was designed to ensure the fall of Berlin no later than May Day, May the 1st. Soviet forces began to move on April the 12th. On the 15th, Hitler issued a special order of the day. For the last time, it said, our deadly enemies, the Jewish Bolsheviks, have launched their massive forces to the attack. Hitler's order said that if every soldier did his duty, the last assault of Asia will crumple and Europe will never be Russian. Eight thousand nine hundred and eighty-three Soviet guns opened up. and more than six million men and women of the Red Army began to move. Zhukov's first Belarusian front in the center, Konev first Ukrainian front to his south, Rokossovsky second Belarusian to his north, raced each other for the prize. Zhukov's offensive began when 140 searchlights operated by female soldiers were turned on in the eyes of the enemy. But the front line was found to be mostly deserted. In the city, up to 10,000 Germans were hanged for defeatism, many from lampposts. April the 20th was Hitler's 56th birthday. He decorated some members of the Hitler Youth for bravery, then went into the Führer bunker 16 and a half meters below the Chancellery Garden for the last time. Берлин 
Нас тоже много подожгли наших машин, но я как-то остался, говорит, ничего. Немного было, там в ногу ранение у меня. Это такое лё легкое ранение. А так, вот вроде все у меня было нормально. Остальное, после, значит, выбирали, ну что, Берлин взяли. И война закончилась. Now at last, after all the ghastly years of toil, blood, tears and sweat, the climax of total German defeat is reached with the death of Berlin. On the 28th, Hitler learned that Heinrich Himmler had been behind the opening of armistice negotiations in Italy. Reichsmarschall Goering, who had slipped away south, signaled Hitler that since the Führer was trapped in Berlin, perhaps he should take control of the German state. Hitler ordered both Goering and Himmler stripped of their rank and arrested. He also ordered SS Oberruppenführer Hermann Fegelein shot, which he was for attempting to slip out of Berlin in civilian clothes. He then married Fegelein's sister-in-law, Eva Braun, and drew up his last will and political testament in which he explained that, I desire to share the fate that millions of others have taken upon themselves in that I shall remain in this city. Furthermore, I do not want to fall into the hands of enemies who, for the delectation of the hate-riddled masses, require a new spectacle promoted by the Jews. On April 30th, after first successfully testing the poison on his beloved dog Blondie, Hitler and his new bride bit down on cyanide capsules, at which point Hitler, to be certain, shot himself in the temple. The Red Army was 200 meters away. The German wireless broadcasts serious important news, said the announcer, and with Bruckner's seventh playing as it had with the announcement of the fall of Stalingrad, the solemn voice continued. reported from the Führer's headquarters that our Führer, Adolf Hitler, fighting to the last breath against Bolshevism, fell for Germany this afternoon in his operational headquarters. Mrs. Goebbels murdered her six children, then she and her husband committed suicide, and the next day the Reichstag fell and the red flag was famously hoisted on its roof. Вместе Бух Розенталь там Берлина нас повернули строго на юг на Рихстаг. Ну было просто, значит, везут на повозке солдат, это пожилой такой с усами. Кого везешь солдат? Гебельса. Мы все ха-ха-ха. Думаешь, шутит это? А на завтра в газетах узнаем, действительно это Геббельс и не зря. General Helmut Wiedling, commanding the military garrison, surrendered the city. The battle for the capital had cost more than 300,000 Soviet casualties. Perhaps a similar number of German casualties and, in addition, 480,000 German prisoners who had failed in their attempt to break out west to surrender to the American, British and French forces from whom they expected kinder treatment. Дальше картинка сразу. Берлин преобразился. Покрылся белым цветом из окон, балконов, где только можно белые полотнища. 
просто не просто на очки, что угодно бело было, вывешивали. Берлинское население ну, не подтверждало, а само капитулировало, сообщало о своей безоговорочной капитуляции. Мы с радостью узнали 2 мая, что Берлин, пал Берлин. Радость была огромная. И даже радость была больше, чем когда узнали о победе. И то вроде хоть меньше эффект был. Немцы в этом время созрели и физически, и морально к капитуляции. Вот это, напомню, значит, белые флаги и вот эта колонна бесконечная. Members of the Grand Alliance were by now making contact all along the front. Montgomery's forces met Rokossovsky's on the line Wismar Wittenberg and on May the 4th, Montgomery received the unconditional surrender of all German forces in northwest Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands. Значит, в казарме команда подъем. Но мы уже привыкли. Подъем, тревога в ружье. Выходи, строится. Все ясно. А тут подъем, никакой тревоги, никакого в ружье, ничего нет. Все встали, смотрят, друг на друга. Что же делать? Зачем подняли-то? Не ясно. Потом посмотрели на улицу, а там мы в городке в таком жили, а там уже солдат дополна. Орут, кричат, обнимаются. Что такое? Война и конец, победа настала. И тут такое, значит, всеобщее ликование, все друг другу братья, все хорошо. И, наверное, часов до девяти примерно так обнимались и целовались. On May the 7th, the Germans signed the unconditional surrender. Before May the 7th, all of Germany's Axis partners but one had already changed sides. Hungary, Romania, Italy were fighting with the Allies by the time Berlin fell. Only Japan remained to oppose the United Nations. Churchill and Roosevelt's successor, Harry Truman, were ready to declare May the 7th victory in Europe, VE Day. But their Soviet allies were not. They insisted on a separate surrender ceremony in Moscow. So VE Day became May the 8th. The war in the West was over. The prisoners of war were liberated. We're in this camp, and suddenly a tank appeared. Next thing I know is the uh, tank turned round and went, uh, went down the far corner of the camp barrier, smashed the whole thing to the ground. The conning tower opened, and the fellow, a Brit, well, I think he was a Brit, was stood up and waved to us. <laughs> That was the end of the war for us. The war in the West was over. Jewish people who had been hidden for years by brave countrymen could show their faces. The day came when I was leaving, and Jan Rozier went to his little money box and took out 100 guilders for me and he gave me 100 guilders. And he said to me, for the train or the bus or whatever you need, and don't forget to write. And uh, so a ride I did all my life.
The war in the West was over. 160,000 collaborators were arrested, a thousand were executed. Most of those who had served went home. Marvellous feeling of joy, really. It had been a very long slog, so it wasn't a sort of tremendous celebration. Uh, we just sort of rather said, oh, thank God that's over, you know, that, that was rather the feeling. The war in the East continued. A firebomb raid on Tokyo in March had killed 87,793 people and destroyed 38 square kilometers of the city. On April the 1st, American forces had landed on the largest of the Ryukyu Islands, an archipelago that stretches from Taiwan to the most southerly of the main home islands, Kyushu. They had landed on Okinawa. We got off May 1st. I was going on watch. I had a four o'clock watch in the morning to eight. And when you stand on watch, they come and call you, because you can't get up. We don't have alarm clocks, you know what I mean? But you better make that watch or you're in big trouble. For the invasion of Okinawa, 430 assault transports were loaded at 11 ports from Seattle to Leyte. On April 1st, 1,300 ships were massed offshore and the 50,000 men of General Simon Bolivar Buckner's 10th Army went ashore against very little opposition. General Ushijima, commanding the Japanese 32nd Army, having concentrated his force south of the Shuri Line. Just minutes after four o'clock. It hit the superstructure. Everything went blank. We were aft, we were machinery aft. Machinery forward was still good. Over the next few days, the Japanese launched kamikaze assaults on the invasion fleet, which did not wholly relent in all the weeks of fighting that lay ahead. By the end of the Okinawa campaign, the suicides of 1,465 kamikaze pilots had accounted for 29 ships sunk, 120 damaged, and 3,048 sailors killed. It was a kamikaze he took us out. We found his body with a parachute. I couldn't understand why he had a parachute on because he might have been shot down and he could bail out. What's the answer to that? I would tell you this, and this is hard for me to tell you. He did his job and he did it well. I fired on planes. I don't know if I have a plane because the sky lit up with the shells. They do go down, but who did it? You don't know. In time, as I got older, I realized he didn't mean it. He did a job. On the 9th of April, American invasion forces opened their main offensive against the well-planned fortifications of the Shuri Line. It was terrible fighting and slow progress. Okinawa north of the line was cleared with little real opposition. The Motobu Peninsula had been cleared by April 20th. But it was deep into May before Japanese resistance was broken in the south. The capital Naha fell on the 27th and Shuri Castle key to the defensive line on the 29th. 
June the 18th, with the battle almost won, General Buckner was killed by the effects of a shell exploding overhead. He was the highest ranking American to be killed in action. To the surprise of the Americans who had not known it elsewhere in the Pacific, the Japanese began to surrender as their morale collapsed. On June 22nd, General Ushijima committed suicide. Casualty lists were catastrophic. Japanese casualties exceeded 110,000. The Americas, 40,000 in battle and nearly 10,000 more. To Kamikaze. This is just part of the price being paid for victory in the Pacific. It hurts you as you get older. Your memory is not pleasant. I don't blame anybody, but people don't know your program. I have to excuse myself because I'm usually a jolly fellow, a fairly wise guy. The Okinawa casualties formed the basis for American projections of casualty rates for the invasion of Japan. The estimate was that taking Kyushu, the first of the home islands, would cause 268,000 American casualties, double the total battlefield deaths suffered by America in the war to date. That figure weighed heavily in the debate that would resolve the next phase of the war the use of a new weapon. The leaders of the Grand Alliance met at Potsdam, but not the familiar faces. Harry S. Truman was now president of the United States, and by the time the conference adjourned in July, Winston Churchill would be missing from the lineup. The 1945 election, Winston Churchill and his party would be dumped in a landslide. Mr. Attlee summed up for Movietone the situation as it appeared to a man about to be Prime Minister. The Labour Party's great victory shows that the country is ready for a new policy to face new world conditions. The agreement that was reached at Potsdam was the last between the members of the Grand Coalition. Shared out influence in Europe. The consequences were famously described less than a year later by Winston Churchill. An iron curtain has descended across the continent, he said. Behind that line lie all the capitals of the ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe. Warsaw, Berlin, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, Belgrade, Bucharest, and Sofia. And he might have added, the cities of Ukraine, Belarus, and the Baltic states, for these had not always been part of the Russian Empire. At Potsdam, the leaders faced the opportunity to create a peace based on compassion and cooperation. Instead, they replaced World War with Cold War. Their priority was the Soviet Union's agreement to enter the war against Japan. Price they were prepared to pay was the temporary occupation of the countries of Eastern Europe, which continued until 1990. Potsdam issued a demand for Japan to surrender, which said, the alternative for Japan is prompt and utter destruction. Words composed in the knowledge that on the 16th of July, the first atomic bomb had been successfully detonated at Alamogordo in New Mexico. Among scientists working on the project were eight refugees from Nazi persecution. We 
When leading scientist Robert J. Oppenheimer saw the blast, he recalled a verse from a Hindu sacred book. If the light of a thousand suns were to rise in the sky at once. The decision whether to use the new super bomb rested with the commander in chief, Harry S. Truman. あの、毎日が Truman ordered that the first special bomb be dropped as soon as conditions allowed in early August. So, on August the 6th, the B-29 in Ola Gay dropped Little Boy from 9,600 metres. It detonated 575 metres above the city, generating a blast of 300,000 degrees Celsius for one ten-thousandth of a second. <laughs> It was not designed to blow a city up, but to knock it down. そして、これもか、しばらく経ったらね、100,000 were killed, up to 100,000 more doomed. It was, said Harry Truman, the greatest thing in history. Though no one really knew whether it would shorten the war. もう家の近くまで行ったらね、またまた火が迫ってきましたわ。あと。Despite Hiroshima, there was no response from Japan to the Potsdam Declaration, so Truman ordered the second attack. That's the atomic bomb exploding at Nagasaki. The film was taken in a B-29 many miles away. Fat Boy was detonated over Nagasaki. 35,000 were killed according to the Americans. 74,800 according to authorities in Nagasaki.
On the day that Nagasaki was bombed, the Trans, Baikal and 2nd Far East fronts of the Red Army invaded Manchuria. The 1st Far East front moved from Vladivostok. そして、パッパッと火を吹くとね、こっちの打ち合わせとんじゃんだ。砲撃されるの。戦車に。戦車がぎゅーっと上がって大砲がパッと来るぐらい上がるとね、パッと火を吹くんですよ。だからその日の
who had surrendered his command in Singapore. They stood at his shoulder as he accepted Imperial Japan's unconditional surrender. The war in the East was over. After eight years of fighting, the Japanese released all of their Chinese prisoners of war. All 56 of them. And the Allied prisoners of war who had survived were liberated. Four corvettes of the Australian Navy entered Danborn Harbour. I can still see them coming down that bay to recover us. By this time, there was only 101 of us left. I forget just where, where I would have been, but I, it was on this ship anyway, coming home. I heard, we heard Bing Crosby singing, Don't Fence Me In. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> Those who had fought could go home. The しめらから帰る、しめらに出てきくわつの Return of peace after the world's most devastating war. VJ Day, victory in the second half of the global conflict. I got off the trolley car with my big duffel bag on my back and my army uniform. I've been away for two years. And here is my sister with her newborn baby and my little mud alongside of her. Pulls away from me, comes running up the block. And my sister is screaming, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, she's never done that. My dog is a good dog. And the dog is running, running, and he's all over me. And I'm crying in tears. And she didn't know me till she got within like five feet. My little dog knew me. Came home and lived happily ever after. The greatest man-made event in history was a war of such colossal proportion that the cost in money is hard to comprehend. The tally in human life even more difficult. For every two people that the United States lost in the war, Britain, her Commonwealth and Empire lost three. The Japanese, 12. The Germans, 22. The Soviet Union, 184. The aggregate figure of 27 million dead for the Soviet Union is probably the best guess. And for China, more than 20 million. No one can accurately calculate the final death toll but it is surely dwarfed by the total of lives not lost, but permanently affected by a war which can never be understood in statistics. I don't speak for the army or what I was involved with. I just gave you the general outlook of how we progressed. But the individual fighting with bayonets, hand grenades, that, that is war. That is war.
For so long a display of colors defining this or that nation's sovereignty over others, the map of the world has now become a great patchwork. The vast land empires are no more. The great maritime empires, Spain, Portugal, France, the Netherlands, the British, all gone. But why? Empires are acquired, conquered, for trade, resources, territory, and because of a conceit common to all empire builders. That because their cultural and political DNA is superior, they are right to inseminate other societies. This has been the story of such a conceit. Two imperial dreams drove their people into the Second World War. The Japanese and German empires expanded violently. They collapsed bankrupt. And their collapse sounded the death knell of the old imperial system. The price of empire can be expressed in monetary terms, but the price also involves values which have nothing to do with money. The enormous convulsion of the Second World War, infected as it was in every part by the bacillus of racism, allowed people to see that independence and identity are incorruptible values. Plunder, to slaughter, to steal, these things they misname empire. Wrote the Roman historian Tacitus 2,000 years ago. Those who could have been embraced as liberators were loathed as conquerors. They misnamed their conquests empire and they paid the price.